Hey there cats and goodies, I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video we discuss my thoughts on episode 8 of the anime series Showa Genroku Rakugo Shinju Descending Stories. And I think the thing that largely struck out to me in this episode is Konatsu finally admitting, you know, I, I mean she's already been showing signs of this fact in the last few episodes, but finally admitting she doesn't want to lose the Yukumo and losing him is tantamount to the loss she still suffers, the mourning she still suffers of losing her parents. Whether or not she's, you know, recognizing the reality of that scenario, as was sort of debuted to us in the previous episode, that she was integral to their penultimate demise, um, you know, she played a, a chief role in that. And, and the Yakumo, all his life, all of her life, since that point, They've been operating under the assumption that, you know, it was actually something he played a part in. Uh, you know, to, to take on that burden, to take on that blame and that guilt and all that stuff. To remove that from Konatsu. And her life, she finally understands, her life would be somewhat emptied for the loss of him. You know, she's, <laughs> for all of her begrudging... In the many years they've spent together, you know, they are family. He is the closest to a surrogate parent that she has in this world, as much as Yotaro has taken care of her. And I love their relationship. I love when they're, you know, sitting on the seaside on the bench and she rests up against him and he kind of blushes because, you know, he's still ecstatic about any opportunity he has to be a comfort to her and to do something for her and to take care of her. And even if it's something this sort of, you know, arguably insignificant to anyone, any passers-by who might look upon them and, and just see them, you know, this is something humongous. It's something ginormous <laughs> for him. Somebody who, when they first met, they, they were, you know, aggressive toward each other. I mean, he was always kind of trying to be friendly, but she really couldn't stand him at first. And, that whole evolution of their relationship, of his being able to take care of her and eventually warming her to the idea of, of marriage and taking care of both she and her son and, and all this stuff. I mean, everything that he has done, he's gone leaps and bounds to be there for her. And so anytime he, he's blushing and he's happy and he's feeling joy at her reciprocating or, or, or resting her laurels, in a sense, on his shoulders and, and leaning on him. Anytime we have that, and very literally in this, in this sense do we have that, she's leaning on him and wanting him to perform Rakugo, to just set her mind at ease after long hours of working and everything. It just warms my ever-loving heart to see that. I love that. I love them as a couple. And I'm, I'm still sort of secretly, <laughs> at least unspoken, thinking internally, I'm still hoping that at some point we actually see her sort of call out to him uh, you know, with how much she she loves him, not just resting on the fact that he's there trying to be a shoulder for her to lean on. I, I would love to see her embrace him and, and, you know, care about him much as he does her, you know. Um, and I, I believe that's something she's evolving toward. I believe in the evolution of their characters and the dynamic between them, their relationship. I believe that's the way it, it's, you know, it is now, really, the way it's gone, going and gone. And, um, but of course, this touching moment is interrupted by Yakumo <laughs> sort of straying away from the protective confines of his rooms. I don't think he's in the hospital any longer, but of course, uh, Yotaro asks her about, is that still, you know, going on? Is that going to be coming to an end soon? So I don't know if he's in the hospital and he snuck out or if he's being given hospital care at home. I believe it's the latter. And uh, he's snuck out <laughs> Yotaro while performing this Rakugo to set Konatsu's mind at ease. He notices the master, you know, straddling along the bridge and, and he goes and chases after him and then tries to find out because, of course, the Akumo is not well to do. He, he's getting sick just in this small amount of walking, bent over the, the edge of, you know, the sort of uh, guardrail or whatever you want to call it. And he's feeling ill. And Kanatsu, that is where she bears her soul to him. Uh... Again, we've seen 
hints of this when he came to in the hospital after suffering his heart attack. She ran to his bedside and said something very similar about it's not your time to go yet. I'm not letting you go yet. But he was kind of out of it at the time. And here she's finally professing it to his face. He's very conscious. He's very aware. And she is all blubbering, you know, like she's she's crying her eyes out because she assumes he might have been trying to take his own life at that point, trying to end his his own suffering, whether emotionally or physically or, or a mixture of the two and everything. You know, I don't know. I think it's arguable whether or not he was actually inspired to do that, whether that was the intention of why he was there. He could have just been out for a walk, you know, just trying to get some air. But they embrace. She collapses into his arms and he reacts typically how I would assume Yakuma would, uh, uh, sort of in a jabbing snipe of a comment, of a remark that, you know, even had I but chosen to try to end my life, none of you will ever let me. <laughs> you know, life is too bitterly grasping onto me to ever let me do that, to ever succeed at trying to do that. And anyway, <laughs> I like this life too much. There's too much about this life that I enjoy that I wouldn't readily actually give it up. But even if I wanted to, you guys are always going <laughs> to dog my every step and you're going to stop me from doing it, you know, because you care about me. And, and it's all about they, they all care about each other. And the way he kind of pushes her away it's as if to regain his own composure again, because we're seeing in that those brief fleeting moments, we're seeing a Yukumo who is vulnerable. And the closest he's been to admitting how he truly feels about life and Rakugo and all this stuff, he, he feels like his Rakugo has come to an end and without it. And he challenges Yotaro, who, who's saying, you know, you don't know what you can further accomplish unless you try. You can't just give up. You can't fall under the weight of your assumption that your body can't handle it anymore and, and all these things. You can't give up hope of continuing to grasp onto this dream that you've held all your life and that you've mastered. And, of course, <laughs> Yotaro, he kind of turns tight and says, well, actually, while we're talking about it, I, I never got to perform in a kori for you. Will you please let me do so? Because he really wants to accomplish his own dream in that sense. He really wants Yakumo to hear this piece that he's dedicated every ounce of his being to which would answer to all of that sort of season-long question of, you know, when will Yotaro ever find his own voice? And I have said in my episode discussion videos that I, I believe it is his own voice that he's found, even though he hasn't injected a level of ego the way Yakumo has suggested, and even though, uh, uh, as Higuchi and things of that sort have said, you know, each of these grand masters of Rakugo generations past, they all had their own perspective and they all had their own uh, uh, intrinsic voice that could, you know, sort of call out from the crowd. You'd know each of the performers for how they performed uh, or, or, you know, the sound of their performance and things of that sort. And, and Yotaro has very much become a chameleon to the performance, to the art, uh, taking on the persona of the characters and losing himself within it. And I have argued this is a, a means by which he is finding his own voice. He's just got that interpretation that he wants to put the characters and the stories, the pieces that he performs above his own persona, above his own ego. And in that, own, in that way, has he found his own sort of voice? And so it's, it's tantamount and penultimate for him to perform to Yakumo and the second half of this episode, once we get off that bridge again, is very much about making that happen. We do see Yakumo uh, meeting up with the boss man, the arguable father of Kanatsu's child, uh, <laughs> you know, the gangster guy. And I was really kind of curious what was going on with that, because some of the dialogue, you know, he, Yakumo talks about owing him something. 
And of course, is tack very much is, well, uh, I, I, you know, I know how to keep a secret, especially in this lifestyle. I never would have been a success in this lifestyle were it not for the fact that I know how to keep a secret. And so I'm very much curious what in the hell that means. Does it, does it have something to do with covering up the deaths of Sukuroku and Miyokichi? Could that be what the reference is touching upon? You know, Yakumo considers it a life debt of sorts, and uh, I, I could be just, you know, getting forgetful about some of the details and the plot points that maybe they covered in the first season, maybe they've covered in the second season thus far. Uh, maybe they're referencing the fact that he is the father of Kanatsu's child. I'm not exactly sure what they were talking about. Um, but the idea of secrecy and the idea of, of this guy, you know, he and Yakumo are friends and... Uh, Loosely, we'll call them friends. <laughs> I don't think they're having play dates every weekend and hanging out. Um, but they do see each other and they do have a history. So, and to see how everyone then, you know, with this guy in tow, because we see his son, uh, the cat that Yotaro previously was physically grabbed by when he went to confront the big boss about, hey, you leave my wife and her child alone, my child alone. He's asking. Matsuda-san, you know, what's going on with Yakumo? Has he retired? And so everyone at that point, the entire episode, the entire focus ends up angling toward Yotaro as being able to perform for Yakumo and in front of a whole crowd of people, some of, some of the most, you know, I guess you could say uh, erudite and wealthy amongst this particular little clan, uh, uh, you know, the people who run the inn, the big boss, the, you know, Matsuda-san and, and the Yakumo, they're all going to be there. And, and But with the secret sort of stipulation that really what this is all about, while Yotaro wants to perform, really what it's all about is angling Yakumo back into action. <laughs> you know, kind of pinning him between a rock and a hard place. And he wants to leave. He's trying to get out of there. He's trying to escape when he realizes, oh, crap <laughs> it's all about making me perform against my will and against their better judgment my better judgment all these things and and sort of the geisha woman who runs the place grabs him and tosses him in the room and apologizes for his arriving late so he's forced into that corner he's painted into the corner that he's gonna have to do something he's gonna have to at least acknowledge the room and he, he does pretty suavely, I think, uh, you know, before actually saying he's going to perform, he's like, well, I'm going to let my dunce, <laughs> you know, my underling perform first and, and I'll chill back and then we'll get to that. You know, we'll get to that later. And um, what ensues is Yotaro giving it all he's got, gangbusters style, finally answering to that dream of his to perform for his master. And with Kanatsu there as well, I mean, the recognition that is going on as as both Yakumo and Kanatsu are looking back and forth to each other, the blush that falls over Kanatsu's face, and she asks him, is that, is that the one? You know, uh, like, immediately Yakumo realizes Sukuroku, the, the Sukuroku of old, is speaking out through this performance, because that is the inspiration for it that Yotaro has taken on. When he watched the video playback, or I should say the uh, old film reel playback of the Sukuroku of old, I mean, he was studying it. There was almost no emotion. He was stoic to take in every level of the intricacies of Sukuroku's performance. And here he has fully embodied it. And when the story takes an emotional turn in his performance, those are real emotions that he is suddenly flooded with. He's bawling his eyes out. He's crying his eyes out in those key moments in the story because he's the most delighted, the most happy he has ever been, the most accomplished he has ever felt because finally he's just rounding out to the end of his performance for his master. And also embodying to the fullest we've ever seen Yotaro capable of his sort of idol, Sukuroku. Immediately recognized by Kanatsu and Yotaro. And, and arguably <laughs> the rest of the room is just astounded by this performance. I myself am rocked by this performance. 
And then it's Yakumo's turn. Hey, he can run away from it no longer. And just as he's doing his introduction, I I just happened to check the timestamp at that moment because I was like, they're not going to do a full report, full performance. <laughs> you know, somehow somehow they're going to cut back on it, and we're not going to see a full Yakumo performance. Sickly though it might have been, and I was right. All of a sudden, there's a knock, and and police detective shows up to arrest the big boss man himself for running guns and swords or, or breaking a gun swords law, something along those lines. And his geisha woman, whether it's his wife or his business owner, whatever it is, business partner, I'm not exactly sure. She's trying to put up a fight, but he says, there's, there's no bother. Don't waste your time. You're just going to make matters worse. I'll go willingly. He apologizes to Yakumo. Episode ends. And so... Did I feel robbed, <laughs> in a manner of speaking, that we didn't get to see Yakumo perform a little bit? But I, I, I started to loosely suspect, wow, I've been watching this episode for a little while now. I don't think they're going to do a full, you know, Yakumo Rokugo performance by the end. And I was right. I was right about that. Um, I doubt we're going to get one in the next episode. I would like to see the Yakumo perform at least one more time. Because I speculate he may die before the end of the series kind of hope maybe he won't um fingers crossed that you know all characters will survive for the most part but what's really intriguing to me is in the aftermath of this episode the pv for the next at least one shot stuck out to me in that pv the only one that i can really think of off the top of my head because of how forthright it was of seeing yotaro seemingly in prison again seemingly wearing prison fatigues has he been arrested <laughs> is is there something they've linked him to is his past life of crime coming back to the fore coming back to haunt him has somebody set him up for something is this merely a flashback of his time in prison before ever meeting the yakumo and becoming you know his uh his student I'm not sure, and I, it really has me curious, uh, because the entire sort of story aesthetic of Descending Stories of this second season, of course, has been to evolve the characters beyond where we left off in the first season, and they've done so by leaps and bounds, and it's been very sort of happy for the most part. Um, everything we've been seeing has been very satisfying, and there haven't been too many hurdles while there have been hurdles, they've been few and far between, and the satisfaction has much more outweighed any potential troubles or hurdles that the characters have thus far had to deal with. With the exception of Yakumo's failing health, ill health. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know <laughs> exactly where we're going next. If that is a flashback, if somehow Yotaro is back in prison, why? Why that would be, I don't know. Um, is he is he the fall guy once again for the criminal organization? Is something along those lines happening? Anybody's guess. Uh, but this episode, it definitely once again rocked me to my emotional core. And it gave me something I've really wanted to see in Konatsu just finally expressing how much she needs the Yakumo, how much she loves him, and he acknowledges that love. He says, you know, it's your love, the love of you guys, Kanatsu, Yotaro, Shin, Matsuda-san. It's, it's the love and appreciation of you who wouldn't let me die were it something I wanted. And it's not even something I want. <laughs> you know, but at the same time, he feels lost in the world because he feels like he's lost his talent at performing Rakugo. So, will he find an equilibrium at this late stage in his life? I hope in the episodes to come, he will attain some level of self-appreciation and see that he isn't so, you know, so much a sheep lost in the woods. And that he still has the prowess and the talent, much as Yotaro is trying to instill in him, and, and Kanatsu in her own way has tried to convince him of that fact, that he, he's still capable, even with that failing health. So uh, bring on the next one. Love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode 8 
of Showa Ganroko Rakugo Shinju Descending Stories. If you've seen it as well, if you enjoyed it as much as I did, if you found the emotional impact to be as impactful as I did as well, any further insights you may have on the Rakugo, on the story, on the author, anything like that, I'll always love having that conversation in the comments. And uh, so, yeah, I'll be <laughs> very much looking forward to the next episode to answer to that mystery what's going on with the Otaro in prison again seemingly unless it's a flashback as I say and uh yeah otherwise that'll be pretty much it for me on this with this video find you well and I'll catch y'all later peace